Hello everyone, welcome to Unit 3, Lesson 4. Today we're going to be talking about the quotient and the product rule. Um, so our content goals for today, we want to be able to expand exponential uh, expressions, which means, you know, take something that's written in its exponential form and write it in its expanded form uh, using the property of exponents. Uh, then we want to be able to condense or simplify, so take something that is expanded and put it back into its exponential form. And we want to be able to use the product and quotient rules to help us simplify those exponential expressions. So let's take a look at the product rule first. Okay. And we have an expression here that says x to the fifth times x to the third. In previous lessons, we learned that we could take an expression like this. Like, let's just say we looked at the x to the fifth power. We could expand that by writing it out as a repeated multiplication, right? So x to the fifth is telling us to take x and multiply it by itself five Right, so there's x times x times x times x times x. That's five repeated multiplications. Then I would do the same thing for x to the third. So I can say x times x times x. And we are multiplying those two things. So I would throw a multiplication in between them. Right. So if I'm looking at this, here's my x to the fifth. And here is my x to the third. Okay. And now if I wanted to put this back in its exponential form in a more simplified manner, right, we could count up the number of repeated multiplications that we have total, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three. So if I do five plus three, well, that gives us eight, right? So we have an exponential form of x to the eighth power, okay? So let's take a look at our next expression here. It looks a little bit more complicated, but uh, what we need to pay attention to here are the bases. Okay, so here we have bases of A and B, and then here's another A and another B. All right, so when we put these types of expressions together, when we expand them or whether we're condensing them, we want to make sure we pay attention to those things that have uh, the same bases. All right, so I'm going to start with the A to the third. All right, and A to the third means a times a times a. And then I'm going to do the other a, right? So I have another a here, so it's times a times a, since it's a squared. All right, so I have all my a's next to each other. And then I'm going to look at the b's, right? So we have b to the fourth. Oops, I don't want to write b to the fourth. I want to expand it, right? So I want to do b times b times b times b. Right, that's my b to the fourth, and then I have a b to the fifth. Okay, so I have b times b times b times b times b. Barely had enough room there, but it's all expanded, right? So if I'm looking at this, here's my a to the third, and here's my a squared. Notice I'm leaving those as the same color there. And then I have my b to the fourth, and my b to the fifth. All right, so every piece of this original expression is represented here in the expanded form. Now, I want to combine these to get into my simplified exponential form. All right, so I'm going to count up my a's. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? 3 plus 2 is 5, so I'm going to say a to the 5th, and then I count up my b's. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when I add those up, 4 plus 5 gives me 9, so this will be b to the ninth power, okay? And you might be tempted to try and put these together and say, okay, well, uh, I will have 14 things total, right? If you count everything up over here, here, you would have 14 things being multiplied, but the things have to be the same if we're going to uh, put them back together, all right? So we can't put A's and B's together. We can only put A's together, and then we can put B's together into their own separate expressions, right? And then these are being multiplied. So these are as simple as it gets right here. This is what we want to end up with. All right, and some patterns that hopefully you caught on to as you watch this video, you might have noticed uh, here we had an expression of 5, right, it, or an exponent of 5 and an exponent of 3. We ended up with an exponent of 8, right? So it seems like we added those. 5 plus 3 gives us 8. And the same thing down here, notice with the a's, we had a 3 and a 2. So when we do 3 plus 2, we get 5, right? And then if I look at my b's, we had a 4 and a 5, right? So if I do 4 plus 5, that gets us 
9. All right, so the pattern here is when we multiply things with the same base, we can simply add the exponents as a shortcut. All right, and I want to use that shortcut because sometimes we run into exponential expressions that have rather large exponents. So notice here, these exponents are really big. I don't want to write this out 22 times or 15 times. It would just be easier if I had a shortcut, and there is, right? So I can take these exponents and I can add them together, right? So I can say, well, this is going to be x to the 22 plus 15, right? Because if I were writing this out, I would have 22 x's, and then I would have another 15 x's, and we would count those up. Well, that's the same thing as adding, right? So 22 plus 15 is simply x to the 37th power. And I can skip this part right here, which is most of the work, right? Writing out all that multiplication stuff. I notice the pattern and I use the pattern to my advantage here. I know that I'm going to end up with 37 repeated multiplications of x. So I just skip the expanded part and write the simplified exponent. All right. Let's try it again here, this time with a y. So notice we have a 12 and a 14. And more importantly, the bases are the same. They're both y's. So I can combine these so I can say, well, this is going to be y to the 12 plus 14, right? Because I'm going to have 12 y's, 14 y's. I'm going to add those together, and we get y to the 26th power, right? So there's my simplified exponential expression. And then here it looks like, again, this looks intimidating. There's a lot of numbers, but pay attention to what has the same base, right? Bases being a and b here, so we want to put our a's together. Right, so if I, I have an a to the 12th and an a to the 13th, so I can rewrite that as a to the 12 plus 13, which is a to the 25th power. All right, so I'm just going to write my final expression down here. We're going to have a to the 25th power for sure times b raised to some power. Well, i got to take a look at my b's. We have a b to the 8th and a b to the 22nd. So if I were combining those, I would do b to the 8th plus 22, and 8 plus 22 is 30, so we would have b to the 30th power. So there we go, that completes my expression. We have a to the 25th times b to the 30th, and we can't do anything else with this because they have different bases, All right? So that, my friends, is the product rule, right? And just to kind of generalize the product rule, if we have the same base, right? So the base being the bottom part of the exponential expression, Right, so these both have a, whatever the exponents are, we can simply add them. All right, that is what's called the product rule. So let's take a look at another rule uh, that you might have noticed in, in yesterday's lesson. Um, so this is called the quotient rule, and this deals with situations where we are dividing things. Uh, so let's take a look at this expression, and let's just write it out in its expanded form. All right, so I'm going to do the top first, and it says 2 to the 5th power. So in its expanded form, without evaluating it, we would just write 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? So 5 repeated multiplications of 2. And then in the bottom of this thing, we would have 2 raised to the second power. So that's 2 times 2, right? So 2 repeated multiplications, all right? And then if I wanted to write this in its exponential form, we would pay attention to our fraction and say, okay, what cancels? And when we say things cancel in a fraction, we say they divide out to become one. So we, we write, we draw these things called giant ones. So like, um, let's say this two, let me highlight here. So let's say this two and this two, they would divide, right? Because two divided by two is just one. So these become a giant one. So it's like we cross them out, but we're not really crossing them out. They're just dividing to become a one. And we could do the same thing with this set of twos here. Okay, so if I look in the top, we have 2 times 2 times 2, which I can write as 2 to the third, right, because I have three repeated multiplications of 2, and then in the bottom, we have 1 times 1, which is just 1, right? So if you wanted to, you could put 2 to the third over 1, but anything divided by 1 is just itself. So its most simplified form would just be 2 to the third, okay? So let's try it again. This time, let's do it with some x's, right? So we did it with numbers up here. We're going to do it with some x's, but notice that the exponents are the same, right? So x to the fifth is going to be x times x times x times x times x. And then in the bottom, we get x times x. 
x. All right, that's x squared. Now, just like with the twos, any number divided by itself is gonna be one, even if it's x, right? x just represents a number, so it doesn't matter what value x takes on. If I take that value and divide it by itself, I'm gonna get one. So these x's cancel or divide out to be one. These x's cancel and divide out to be one. And notice what we have left in the top here is x times x times x, which is x to the third. Now on the bottom, there's only a one times one, so that's just one. So we're just gonna leave this as x to the third. You could put over one, wouldn't be wrong, but it, you, we don't really need to. All right, so we had five, two, we ended up with three. Same thing here, five and two, we ended up with three. Okay, so try and pay attention to patterns as we go through this, all right? Now we're gonna get to this last expression here. I know it looks uh, intimidating. There's a lot of things going on, but remember, Pay attention to the things with the same bases. We're going to expand this, and then when we cancel things out, we can only cancel out um, the things that have the same number. All right, so let's do this one. We got a to the fifth, so we're going to do a times a times a times a times a. And this is all on the top of my fraction here. It's going to be a big fraction by the time we get done expanding it. And we got b to the fourth, so we got b times b times b times b. Then in the bottom, we have a times a times, and then I'm just going to go over here because I want to line up my a's and my b's. So I got b times b times b, all right? Then I look for things to cancel. So before we do, let's just make sure we have all of our pieces, right? a to the fifth is here, and then b to the fourth is here. Right. And then a squared, right? So a squared is here. And then let me get one more highlighter here. Let's go orange, right? So b to the third is here, right? So every single piece of this expression has been expanded and is in its correct location here in the expanded part uh, of our problem, all right? Now I'm looking for things to cancel. A's will cancel with A's. B's will cancel with B's. So I've got one set of A's canceling here and another set of A's canceling here. So now I look at the remaining A's. I have A times A times A, which is A to the third, and that's in the top of my fraction. Okay. Then I go over here, I'm going to do the same thing with the B's. I have a set of B's canceling here, here, and here, and all that's left in the top is one B. So we can say b, if you want to, you can say b to the first, but it's not necessary. b to the first is just b, okay? And then in the bottom here, we would have one times one times one times one times one, which is just one, right? And so that means the division by one is really unnecessary. Anything divided by one is just itself. So really all we need is the a to the third times b. And that would be our final simplified exponential form. All right, so let's take a look at some patterns here. All right, so notice we had five and two, and we ended up with a three, right? Well, think about it. Five minus two gives me three, all right? And then in this one, we did the same thing. Five and two, five in the top, two in the bottom. Five minus two gives me three, all right? And we saw it again here. Right, five, two, five minus two is three. Well, guess what? When we did the B's, right? So when we did the B's, we had oops, four and three, right? So we had a four in the top and a three in the bottom. Well, four minus three is one, and that's what we got on our B over here. So hopefully what you're noticing here is that when we divide two things that have the same base, we can simply subtract their exponents, right? So when we look at these expressions here, notice the exponents are very big, but we can handle this because in, instead of writing out 15 x's in the top and 11 x's in the bottom, we know a whole bunch of them are gonna cancel out and what's gonna be left is, you know, the, the four, right? So 15, right, if I take this 15 and the 11, I would say x to the 15 minus 11, because that's what we did up here. We did five minus two and got a three. I could do the same thing. 15 minus 11 gives me x to the fourth. And there we go. 
So I can skip all of this if I can remember this rule. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing here. So you would have to envision there are 23 Y's in the top. There are 10 Y's in the bottom. A bunch of them are going to cancel. And what we're going to be left with is whatever 23 minus 10 is. And that is going to be Y to the 13th power. So this would be my final simplified expression. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here. Now remember, this is the one where we had like all the A's and the B's. And these are rather large exponents. I'm going to use that uh, the pattern that I saw. So we would have 16 A's and 13 A's in the bottom. Then we'd have 28 B's in the top and 22 B's in the bottom. Then we go and cancel everything out. But I'm just going to use that pattern. I'm going to take uh, the A's here. And I'm going to say, okay, well, there's 16 and 13. 16 in the top, 13 in the bottom. So I would do A to the 16 minus 13 which means all of those A's that are gonna cancel out except for three in the top. And then we do the same thing with B. There'd be 28 in the top, 22 in the bottom, and then they all cancel, leaving me with 28 minus 22, which is six. So we get B to the sixth power. And both of these would be in the top, so we'd have A to the third times B to the sixth. And that would give me my final expression for that. Okay, so remember, only A's cancel out with A's, only B's cancel out with B's. That's why we didn't cancel anything else out. We just did the A's and the B's separately and then combined them with a multiplication. Okay. All right, so just to generalize there, our quotient rule for exponents, if I have two things with the same base and they are being divided, we can simply subtract the exponents as a shortcut, which is what we did in these three expressions. All right, guys, uh, that's it for today. Make sure you give the practice problems a try. And if you have any questions, make sure you ask in the Zoom chat. Have a great day.